And if you look right there, Officer Marquette's face and forearms are lit uh, by Perkins' pistol light beam, meaning he is pointing the gun directly at him. That is the end of the story. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here, and this is, in fact, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency's investigative video that they released to the Decatur Police uh, and to investigators and to district attorneys before charging Mar Mac Marquette, a police officer from the Decatur Police Department, uh, with murder. A charge that you're going to find is completely unfounded. Uh, you just you're not going to be able to get a conviction here. Uh, that is the reality. This video should have came out way sooner uh, because the public has been misled uh, by various individuals uh, across the board here. The media is just as guilty uh, as anyone else. I've tried to keep an open mind uh, on this. It's been hard uh, because a lot of things have gone on that I am not happy to have seen, mostly just holding the tape. That was like, completely unnecessary. Uh, they should have released it and let people see what was seen, and let them react to it the way they're going to react to it, and keep law and order, and let it be known that chaos was not going to reign uh, because of the bad decisions uh, of Steve Perkins. Sorry, that's just the way it is. This video is ugly, uh, this video is graphic, and nobody should watch this video. But if you want to know what actually happened, you need to watch this video, and you need to know exactly what went on here. So I bring this to you. I will stop it at times uh, to give my opinion, but I'm going to try to let this stand for itself as much as it possibly can. Uh, let's go ahead and get to it. You know, they, they left this up to the investigative forces, obviously, just like they were supposed to, uh, but they still should have released it sooner. This all could have been handled so much better. This is just laying out what happened here on the day. He brandished a handgun to the guy looking to tow the vehicle. Uh, the individual trying to tow the vehicle left, uh, and then what he would do is call the police and say, uh, I had a gun pulled on me, which is a crime. It's a crime. Uh, he called uh, the police uh, and asked that they help him. Uh, he filed a police report for that because you cannot brandish a gun at someone uh, and chase them off your property while they're trying to repossess a vehicle. A vehicle which, by the way, was up for repossession. Uh, here is the call to the police department. Thank you, dispatch. This is Kelly. Hey, Kelly. This is Kelly with an all-star Hey. Um, I was wondering if you could get uh, an officer out here to our lot. What's the address? 3920 Full Valley Road. Okay. What was your name again? Caleb. And what's your phone number there? Uh, they, uh, my personal is 256-508-7058. Okay. What's going on? I uh, went to try to secure a vehicle. And Tedder came out of the house and pulled a gun on me. Where did that happen? Uh, 3931 Ryan Drive. Okay. Did they fire off a shot or anything? No. It just, I, I, thought, I called Jack earlier and he said that that pushes the borders of yeah. evil and criminal. Who's, who's the debtor that was, that pulled the gun? Uh, the, the vehicle's name is under Stephen Perkins, but I don't know who the gentleman was to come out on me. Okay. Do you know I'm, assume, I'm assuming it was him. Okay. Did you get a look at him, what he looked like? Yeah, he bald, um, like a milk chocolate color, white man. Okay. Do you see what he was wearing? Uh, he come out in nice ball shorts and like a white t-shirt. Did you see what kind of gun it was? I did not. It was dark. Okay. Was it a handgun or a long gun? Yeah. It was a handgun. Hand okay. All right. Yeah, I'll get somebody down to y'all shop on Pool Valley to meet with you. All right. Thanks, All right. Ma thanks. Okay, let's stop right there. One of the arguments made in the beginning of this whole case uh, was that there was no call made to dispatch. That's just not true. 
You see it here. There's clearly a call made to dispatch in this situation. And yes, he references that he talked to another officer beforehand because he called and said, hey, is this against the law? And he says, bordering, call dispatch and have that have them dispatch someone out to you uh, to handle it and file a police report. This is exactly what's supposed to happen. There's been allegations that this is somehow uh, improper or wasn't done correctly. That's not true. But that was a narrative. And that narrative was created to say they had no reason to go there, no reason to go there in the first place. Not true. Not true at all. Bravo 5, 9 and clear. 10-4. I have a meet complaint. 10-4, good. It's going to be 3920 Pool Valley Road Southwest. Caller is requesting to meet an all-star recovery reference. He was trying to get a vehicle on Ryan's drive, and the male stepped out and pulled a gun on him. And you can see your notes are further. 3920 Pool Valley Road Southwest. 10-4, So they were dispatched appropriately. They dispatched him uh, to the lot, and that's what they're supposed to do. There was an allegation of a crime was committed, uh, pulling a gun on someone. You, you, look, and there's been a lot of people saying, well, he was just uh, standing his ground and all this other stuff. No, he brandished a, hand, he brandished a handgun at an individual who had the right to take that vehicle. Now, we can talk all day about whether he should have stopped and all the other stuff. Uh, he, great. And he did, and he left. But that doesn't justify doing it in the first place, and it surely doesn't justify uh, doing it later. And you'll obviously, we all know why. What happened next did not have to happen. The correct answer is let the person take your vehicle and then take the proper steps to make sure if it was wrong that it doesn't happen again. But it wasn't wrong. That's, that's another point here that people need to just be honest about. Uh, coming up here as you are looking at uh, some photos of the area where they lay out uh, what happens in this. I don't think there's a lot of talking going on in this as they uh, lay out the street uh, that this happened. Uh, and uh, this right here is a very unfortunate situation all the way around. None of this had to go down this way. It just did not have to happen this way. We, we had a situation that could have been handled uh, so much better uh, by Steve Perkins. He's the one that set these wheels in motion. It's very unfortunate. Uh, there is the house. There's where the officers were. And you heard a lot from some of the media. They were hiding behind the house. They were hiding this. And they were across the street. No, they were watching the situation because somebody came out with a gun before and, and pulled it on the guy. Now, should they gone back and tried to get this vehicle? No, they should have gone back and, and knocked on the door, in my opinion, and, and came in and, and said, why are you pulling a gun on people? That's what they should have done. Okay, so I, I would argue that that's probably the wrong way to handle this is help the guy recover the vehicle. I, I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. So this was handled in the inappropriate way, in my opinion, uh, on that front. So going back to this, just real quick, this, this they're going to start showing body cam footage and, and sh stuff from different angles. And I warn you, this is graphic, and, and it's going to get graphic, and, and it's not going to be pleasant but if you want the facts of what happened here uh, here it is uh, i believe this individual is across the street at the time there's the tow truck tr towing the vehicle getting it up he says you got a guy coming out And again, just a sad situation that did not need to happen. Now, they're going to go through this multiple times, and you're going to see it uh, from multiple angles. And it's, it's tough to watch.
they're cuffing him after he's been shot. Again, not sure that's necessary, but definitely not sure. I, I know it's not murder. They've called the ambulance. They're going to try to help him. And you got some problems with the tape here where it stops every now and then. Uh, but we'll continue as it goes on. They're slowing this down. That's the pistol flashlight. That's the light beam. This you're going to see a lot. That is his light beam illuminating. Perkins is pointing the gun with his right hand and aiming it at Marquette. He brings his left arm up. So they're making the argument that he is has his hand up and he's bringing his other hand to it. Now, later on, you're going to realize the something that you may not know at this point. When they got his gun, a round was not chambered. Perkins had apparently dry fired his gun and pulled it before he got out there. I don't know when he did this, but some people carry their gun like this. They dry fire the gun and then they put their magazine in. And that way, the trigger is already depressed. And even if you pull the trigger, nothing's going to happen because it's not around chambered. By my assumption, and anyone who knows anything about guns, he's holding the gun like this. He realizes he may have even pulled the trigger and realizes nothing's going to happen. So he's reaching up to chamber the round. I'd show you on a gun, but I'd probably get in trouble for it. So he's trying to chamber the round as he's bringing his hand closer and aiming it. It's a bad situation and police officers, whether they should have been there and doing this the way they should have, which I would argue they should not. They're not under any obligation to get shot and they didn't know that he didn't have a round chambered. It was really stupid for him to carry that gun out there. It was really stupid for him to carry it out there without it, without the round chambered, because even if he'd run into a tow truck driver who may have tried to shoot him for having a gun could have went very badly. And, well, it did go very badly. Let's continue. This is Marquette, the shooter's body cam. And he's standing off to the left of the garage. I personally think they should have made themselves known. I, I think that would have probably been a good thing to do here. And, and that's what I would have done. So he's off to the side of the house watching uh, all of this go down. I think you could make the case that these police officers didn't do the right thing here. You have a hard time making the case of murder. <laughs> You're watching as they're hooking the car up. Here comes Perkins. Hey! hey police! Get on the ground! Five, seven, three. Shots fired. Shots fired. And drop Marquette the gun! Drop the gun! gun. All right, drop the gun! Action, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. Exactly what Five, seven, three, one male down. I got to go. Need an ambulance. Really I... Here. I just want to tell you, you're, you're about to start seeing a lot of blood. You heard how many rounds were shot. A lot of blood's coming. ASAP. There's a gun right there. I got to cover. Go ahead, cover. All right. Let me reload. Cover me. I got you. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. I'm trying to help. All right. We're calling an ambulance. 
So again, the video file is a little hanky. There's the blood. Again, cuffing him may not have been the right thing to do here either, but they don't know the situation. He's just walked out with on a good with them the gun. So it's a it's a bad situation. Perkins is in bad shape in this case. Obviously, he would die later. Uh, from this point of view, what you're looking at is uh, Officer uh, Muckadam. He is behind Marquette, and he watches this whole thing go down. Um, this is right before the shooting. He's just look at what we're seeing here. They're going to break this down on the tape here in just a second. So I, th I think this is an interesting point, point here. I, in this light right here you're seeing circled, this is the light from Perkins' gun. It has a flashlight on the end of it. And he is swinging it across here under the truck uh, to Marquette, as they're about to show you. And if you look right there, Off Officer Marquette's face and forearms are lit uh, by Perkins' pistol light beam, meaning he is pointing the gun directly at him. That is the end of the story. That is going to get you off on a murder charge. You can go into the, all the conversation about why they shouldn't have been there and all this other stuff. That's fine. That's up for debate. That probably should cost you your job. Shouldn't put you in jail for murder. And it's not going to. So the, the argument being made here is that he pointed at him twice, twice before he was shot. All right, so this is the last image you get of the video, and it is a picture of the gun with the trigger depressed and the light on. This is why a round didn't go off. And it's why well, there wasn't a shooting of a cop in this situation, uh, because he did not have a round chambered. And he said the trigger was already depressed. Uh, so that that's why he was raising his arm up to the to the slide in order to to rack it, but it doesn't matter. The lights on, they shine the light in the guy's face. That's probably going to be the end of it. So the debate should be this: How did the DA get to a point where they're going to charge on this? It, it makes absolutely no sense. It's a bad call uh, on this uh, discipline for doing what they did. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it was necessary uh, to go out there and. Uh, try to take this truck again, knowing this guy came out with a gun. They should have went out and, and actually confronted Perkins themselves. That's what they should have done. Uh, not wait until he came out of the house and, and then had to deal with this scene, knowing that someone had already brought a gun in. So uh, a mistake is not a murder, uh, but I, I think we already knew that that part of all of this had gone down. Um, a lot of stuff has been dispelled by this about how he didn't point at the police officer, he did. He didn't have a gun. He obviously did. This shooting is going to be found to be a good one. Now, this is an ugly scene. It's an ugly period for Decatur and Alabama and America in general. Uh, but it's a good shoot. And I, I don't think anyone can argue uh, otherwise. The other disciplinary matters are, are for other people to discuss. But we now have the tape that shows us exactly what happened on the scene. And if you made it all the way through, thank you for watching. And let me know what you think, because I'm sure this conversation isn't going away anytime soon.